So this vlog is going to be all about my current cutting diet. So you saw a little bit of my morning routine there in the previous clips. I wake up, uh, first thing I check my weight and I record it in my spreadsheet. Then I went out to get my physique photos and we'll chuck them up on the screen now. I like to monitor my progress with both my weight and my visuals um, just to make sure that I'm staying on top of things and that my diet and cardio and training protocol is delivering the desired results at the desired rate that I want. So now we are getting ready for fasted cardio. So I have a couple of fat loss supplements here that I take. The first one is your Himbine HCL. I take 10 milligrams of this. Your himbean, when looking at the research, only tends to be really effective when consumed in a fasted state, which is why I'm doing my cardio fasted and taking the supplement with it. Secondly, I would take 50 milligrams of ephedrine. So ephedrine, again, has a lot of good solid research on the fat loss benefits that it has. But in a lot of countries, uh, ephedrine is quite difficult to get, but in Indonesia, it's quite easy. So these are the two supplements that I'll take in a fasted state. And then alongside, I have my coffee. So we've basically got a combination of your imbine, ephedrine, and caffeine. That I would call like my, my fat loss trifecta stack. And then during the cardio session, I have half a scoop of the Future Way, which gives me around 10 grams of essential amino acids. My cardio isn't super high intensity, but because it is in a fasted state and I am in a calorie deficit, there can tend to be a risk of muscle loss. So by having some amino acids in the blood when I do my cardio, I'm just looking to mitigate the risk of that as best I can. So I'm gonna get this coffee down and then we'll probably head off to the gym to get this cardio done in around 20 minutes. Cardio routine at the moment is 30 minutes fasted. I'm just doing that on an incline treadmill. So I set the speed to three kilometers an hour and then I put it on a max incline, uh, which is 15%. And by the end, like my calves are pumped as hell because it is pretty steep. So it's not super fast, uh, but because the incline's high, it gets my heart rate to around about 130. I just maintain it there. I generally recommend cardio in like the 120 to 135 beats per minute heart rate range. Going faster than that, you're probably tapping into carbohydrate and protein energy stores you don't want to be. Whereas if you're going below that, uh, the intensity is probably just so low that you're not burning uh, that much fat. So 30 minutes here, and then we will hit some abs. I've been doing abs every second day. So I'll do six sets total, and it ends up being three sets for lower abs and three sets for upper abs. So today we're just gonna do hanging leg raises for the lower abs and do a rope crunch for the upper abs. And I started working in some like vacuum training, not like vacuuming my room, like 
vacuum my midsection. I'm just trying to see if it can bring my stomach in any tighter and it's just good to have proof of abdominal control I think. So yeah, I'm gonna get this cardio done, uh, we'll hit some abs and then we'll catch you guys in the next clip. Alrighty guys, we got meal one going down here. So on this plate, we've got two whole eggs, 350 grams of egg whites and 100 grams of mushrooms. And then I've got 120 grams of cooked white rice over here. This bowl, 100 grams of chopped strawberries. I've got my five fish oil tabs here. Then in this glass, this is an Indonesian specialty called jamu, which is a blend of turmeric, ginger, and lime. It tastes awesome, but turmeric has a lot of health benefits, specifically in regards to its anti-inflammatory properties. And then I have here 250 mils of cranberry juice. So cranberry juice is one of the lowest carbohydrate fruit juices that you can get. So that's why I've gone with this option. And then in terms of the meal itself, the egg whites are a really good low calorie option to sort of bulk up the size of the meal. Same goes for the mushrooms. Mushrooms, like it's like 30 calories for 100 grams of mushrooms and it adds a fair bit of size to the meal, which is perfect for me right now because the hunger really starting to kick in. So I do also add a little bit of tomato sauce onto the eggs and rice. I don't track this, I don't weigh it out, but I basically just do a consistent squirt through and this is going to be the same throughout the entire diet. So I'm starving after cardio and abs, my hunger is always pretty rampant. So I'm going to get this meal down and we will catch you for the next one. meal two is going down and this is also the pre-workout meal this is actually my favorite meal on uh, my current diet so what we have here is 70 grams of dry measure oats two packets of stevia cinnamon and salt and then mixed in i have 50 grams of the bulk nutrients protein matrix the rocky road flavor which is absolutely bomb then on top i have 100 grams of strawberries and 20 grams of almond butter and a prep hack for when your food's getting kind of low is you add a little bit of baking soda just when you're cooking it and it actually fluffs it up and it gives it a lot more volume so you can see here for not a whole lot of calories this is a pretty damn big bowl and it keeps me well fueled and basically satiated for the two to three hours around my training window so I'm gonna get this meal down and then I have over here my intra and pre-workout stops. So pre-workout, I'm having one serving of the Tutti Fruity pre-workout 101. 
and then intra workout I have a full scoop of the future way which gives me around 23 grams of EAs or protein whatever you want to call it and then in my future way I also have seven grams of creatine monohydrate mixed in with that so really good pre-workout meal i've been having this for years now it doesn't matter when i'm bulking or when i'm cutting but it is a really good cutting meal just because you've got the fiber from the oatmeal it's slow digesting i add a little bit of almond butter which slows the digestion even further uh, which is ideal what you want when you're training for like a, a fair bit of time because what the almond butter does by slowing the digestion it gives you more of a consistent slow release of the carbohydrates into your bloodstream across the whole workout window so I'm starving, I'm gonna get this meal down and we'll probably catch you guys in the gym for back day. No, it's getting serious when the shoes come off. Really, really good session considering I'm on pretty low food. I actually hit a PR on deadlifts today. The first time I've ever touched 240 kilos and six pretty clean reps to be fair. So six plates aside, deadlift is, is well on the horizon. Might even get it uh, during this cut, which is pretty damn cool. So we have got meal three, the post-workout meal going down now. We have 150 grams of shredded coconut chicken breast. And then I've got 80 grams of these beans and carrots with like a little bit of a sesame dressing on them. And then I've got 40 grams of just raw cucumber here. I want to give a shout out to the guys at Eat Street in Changu. So they're vacuum sealing my chicken, uh, my beans, uh, even some of my potatoes. So I basically, it saves a heap of time for me and I'm able to just grab and go and pull my portions out when I need them and their food tastes awesome as well. So alongside this, I have 200 grams of cooked Japanese sweet potatoes. We have about a tablespoon of mustard. I don't track that because it's like five calories. And then I've got a handful of pickled ginger, which I don't count that either because it's like five calories. So, but I just keep it consistent um, throughout this cut. So I'm absolutely starving gonna get this meal down and we'll catch you guys in the next clip.
Alrighty guys, meal four is going down now. So we have 200 grams raw weight of sirloin steak, uh, which I just cooked up. I had a little bit of leftover from yesterday. Then I've got 100 grams of the beans and carrots, which I just stir fry together with a bit of salt and some garlic powder. And then just 100 grams of cooked weight white rice to wrap up this meal. So before I get into this, as part of this video, I wanted to share what I think my top five dieting tips, and I'll pop them on the screen as I talk through them. But my first one is to consume four to six meals that are evenly spaced throughout the day. And I recommend doing this because it's going to allow you to maximize the anabolic response from your daily protein intake. We know from the research that consuming really high boluses of protein close together are not as good for muscle growth or muscle retention as spreading that protein intake across all of your waking hours and evenly distributing it. And yes, of course, this means that intermittent fasting is not a recommended strategy from me because what that does is it shortens your feeding window. That means that your protein feedings are going to be closer jammed together and that's going to mean that you're minimizing some of the anabolic potential from that dietary protein so my second the diet tip when it comes to fat loss is to make sure that you're losing between a half to one percent of your body weight uh, per week going any slower than that unless you're super super shredded is just going to mean that the dieting phase gets dragged out super super long and you don't want to be dieting for half a year Secondly, going much faster than 1% of your body weight per week, unless you're super, super fat, could put you at risk of muscle loss and could put your performance in the gym down in the toilet. Now, between half and 1% of your body weight per week, that's a pretty safe bet. And I also do recommend just slowing down the rate of weight loss as you get leaner, because as you get leaner, your risk of losing muscle when you're in a calorie deficit increases. I'm not super shredded at the moment, so I'm still targeting between 0.8 to 1% body weight losses per week, which for me at 100 kilos is around 800 grams to one kilo per week. Now, my third dieting tip is to consume low energy dense food sources. So energy density refers to the amount of calories contained per 100 grams of food weight. So low energy dense sources of food means they have a really large volume for not a whole lot of calories. So that's why you notice in my diet, when I'm in a calorie deficit, I'm consuming things like oatmeal, white potatoes, strawberries, watermelon, lots of vegetables, because these are some of the lowest energy dense food sources that you can get. If you're consuming cereals and honey and pancakes and a whole lot of nut butters and things like that, they're very calorie or energy dense. So it's gonna give you a harder time adhering to your caloric allocation. Now, my fourth tip is to consume 2.5 grams per kilo of your body weight in animal sourced protein. Now, I say animal sourced protein uh, because animal sourced proteins like your dairies, your meats, your eggs, uh, they're complete protein sources, which means they contain all of the essential amino acids required to build or repair a human muscle protein. Now, plant sources of protein, like the indirect protein sources that you might get from bagels or pastas or things like that, they're incomplete proteins. So they don't contain all the amino acids that we need to build a new muscle. So I don't necessarily count them as anabolic um, protein sources. So by making sure um, I'm getting 2.5 grams per kilo of body weight animal source protein, I'm gonna be maximizing my chances for maintaining all of my muscle while I drop body fat. Now following on from that, in terms of the macro discussion, I recommend keeping your dietary fats to 20 to 30% of your total calories. Now what that allows you to do is allocate a big chunk of your remaining calories to carbohydrates because carbohydrates are what's gonna allow you to perform better in the gym the better you can perform in the gym, the more calories you're gonna be able to burn, and the better chance you are going to have to maintain your muscle mass. Now, my last tip, uh, which I guess kind of goes against maybe popular opinion, certainly might upset a few people in the if it fits your macros camp, and that is to keep your foods and your meals consistent as possible. Now, what this does, it allows your visual progress and your weight progress become a lot more predictable. 
if you are a completely flexible dieter and you're changing your foods and you're changing your meals, changing your meal times, your sodium and your fiber day to day, basically your, your weight's gonna be moving like that through across the week. And uh, specifically when it comes to sodium and fiber, if those intakes are fluctuating quite substantially day to day, your visual look, so how you look in the mirror, uh, can really, really fluctuate and that can mess with number one, your headspace and more importantly, determining how well you're actually progressing on your diet. So consistent or, or following what I consider a, a meal plan, it's going to mean that your progress becomes a lot more predictable and it's going to mean that your adjustments when they're needed are going to be a whole lot more accurate and you're going to know when you actually need to make a lowering in food or an increase in cardio or something like that. So they're my top five diet tips. I hope they help you guys out a little bit. Uh, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna get into this meal and I'll catch you guys for the next one. More than one, bad. Mm -hmm. Alrighty guys, got the last two meals for the evening being prepared here. I'm gonna talk about them both because we've got to head out to get some photos for the second Koshiro release. So meal five is pretty simple. Both of these meals, my last two meals are lower carb because I like to keep my carbohydrates closer to the workout window because they're gonna help maximize performance in the gym, which is a big priority for me. And it should be for you if you're looking to maintain as much muscle as you can while you're dropping fat. So meal five is 150 grams of shredded chicken with 100 grams of cooked beans. And also has a little bit of shredded coconut mixed in with that. And then here I have 300 grams of watermelon. So watermelon, is crazy low energy dense. So for 300 grams of watermelon, it's only 90 calories. So you're getting a big volume for not a big hit into your calorie allowance. So that is gonna be meal five. And then my final meal, which I'll have just before bed. In the off season, usually I'd have like a casein shake or a casein pudding, but it doesn't really fill you up too good. So what I'm doing instead is 400 grams of egg whites because it has a much higher volume and it fills you up a little bit more. And I've also added 20 grams of natural peanut butter with that as well. So it's gonna slow the digestion time to try and give a more consistent, stable release of the amino acids into the blood over a number of hours while I'm sleeping and not eating. And then just for a little bit of flavor, I've added some cinnamon and also a little bit of Hershey's no sugar chocolate syrup. It has like five calories per serve. So this is gonna take us to the end of the full day of eating. And I know you guys are gonna ask, so the macros for my current uh, normal training day diet and I count all the essential amino acids that I'm having during cardio and, and the future way that I have during my training as well. 315 grams of protein, 208 grams of carbohydrates. So the carbs are starting to get down into those low numbers and 63 grams of fat. So I can already tell that my weight loss, fat loss is starting to plateau a little bit. So this is my first full day of, of cutting diet, but it's probably gonna come down quite quickly, but it's not gonna be a massive overhaul. My fats are still on a little bit of the higher range at 63 grams, so the next step is probably gonna be me pulling like 20 grams of the almond butter out of the pre-workout meal or, or 20 grams out of the egg white meal. Also something I forgot to mention is I also have another five grams of fish oil with this meal as well. So I'm getting 10 grams of fat from fish oil now. I never used to be a massive advocate of fish oil, but with some of the newer research coming out on fish oil supplementation in athletes, I've been a lot more assertive with my consumption of that now. A lot of recovery benefits, anti-inflammatory benefits, cardiovascular benefits as well, that are just really becoming more consistent findings in the literature. So I'm gonna keep my fish oil at least at 10 grams for I don't know, the next couple of years. So that is the diet. I hope you guys learnt a thing or two. Uh, the fat is coming off, but we still got a fair 
way to go. I reckon I really want to push down into some decent shape to see how I look. Um, something close to like a three kilos away from stage condition or something like that. And if I am happy with how I look, then that could potentially shape up into a push for a contest next year. But we've got a lot more work to do before then. But for now, that's going to be a wrap for the day of eating. We'll catch you guys in the next one.